Robert here, and as you can see, it's going to be an amazing Fiddleback Friday from the knife lineup that we just teased you with. Uh, but before I get into the in-hand part of the video, like you're used to, I wanna let you know about some changes that are coming up or tease you with a couple of changes that are coming up. I'll have more information in a video next week with all the details, uh, but just plan on the Fiddleback Friday as you know it changing a little bit. Uh, we want some uh, differentiation between Fiddleback Forge, the brand, and the other knife makers that we sell that aren't necessarily under the Fiddleback Forge umbrella, and also offer a way to expand upon that to bring you uh, exposure to even more awesome knife makers. But again, more details on that next week. Uh, just make sure you're looking out for a change. As far as this week goes, everything will be in the same place, same way that you are used to, and uh, we'll roll out next week with some changes. So just to make you aware of that, if you've got any questions or concerns about that, hit me up in the comments. I'll make sure I cover that in the next video that we do. Uh, but other than that, we're gonna go ahead and get into the knives for this week that'll be in the normal place that you're used to, which is fiddlebackforge.com slash Friday. Now, if you don't know how any of this works because you, this is all new to you anyway, well, I'll go over at the end of the video how to go about getting one of these amazing knives and we'll talk about that in detail there. But for everyone else, we're gonna go ahead and get into the in hand right now and show you what all of these knives look like in some extra large mitts so that you have a better idea of what's showing up in your mailbox next week. So a great place to start this Fiddleback Friday, of course, is with Fiddleback Forge, which if you have a concern about the upcoming changes, just know Fiddleback Forge is a part of that. They'll remain a part of that and will still continue to be a fixture of the Friday sales, which also won't change. But let's get started with the in hand with this beauty right here. This is, of course, the Bush Boot model, which is extremely popular, especially when you're rolling with that vintage micarta those white pinstripes separating everything and rolling underneath everything, and then that beautiful piece of African blackwood. Now, African blackwood is no longer imported to the U.S. from what I'm being told, so that's going to continue to be a very highly sought-after material and become very hard to get on knives. So if you like that material, you wanted a knife in African Blackwood, uh, you may want to go ahead and pick one up as soon as you can. But it's not the only gorgeous wood-handled knife from Fiddleback Forge this week. We also have knives like this P2 right here rocking this really beautiful walnut. If I can get it to move there so you can see some of the chatoyance in that handle. Um, the P2 is actually a pattern that Andy drew up that's actually available over at Pops Knife Supply. Uh, so you can actually buy that pattern and make your version of the same knife uh, without having to go through the trial and error of designing a good functional knife. But this one right here obviously was already made for you by Mr. Andy Roy himself, rocking the uh, Tiffany blue pinstripes, which goes really, really well with those wood handles. And uh, the P2 is a full four inch blade, even threw in a really nice taper tang for you, uh, which makes that knife absolutely awesome. Now, if you've been holding out for one of the larger Fiddleback Forge knives, this is one of two that I'm going to show you that is going to fit the bill. This is the Camp Muck, and that's rocking Hornbeam Burl. And as you can see up close here, it's absolutely gorgeous handle material. So uh, this thing is an absolute camp beast, hence the name, of course. And of course, the shape is reminiscent of the Nesmuck models and that nice upswept belly shape. I would advise a lanyard on it if you do so, but it's going to be great for chopping as well. Um, so you're wanting to set up camp, you're wanting to do some batoning, that kind of thing. This knife is going to rock it out and be excellent at that. And with the 8670 steel being super tough, great choice for a great big camp knife. And speaking of a large bushcraft knife that would be excellent to add to your collection, this right here is the Duke and uh, super happy to see this one back especially with that really cool stacked pinstripe. This thing is just absolutely long and sexy and super tough and durable. 10 and a half inch overall gives you a five and a half inch blade. 8670, obviously super duper tough. Um, it's gonna make it feel light and nimble in hand even for the size, but uh, really cool, really cool knife. I like the thick black liners on it as well. The white pinstripes really match. Um, the side pinstripes from the micarta being stacked. Really cool knife. You're not going to see this my this handle material again, I don't believe. We've got a new knife, sort of, 
from Joey with JB Knife Works in the African Blackwood that's no longer being imported. Uh, but the sort of new model is this Layman model that is a Layman Hunter. Now, this isn't a lot different from the normal Layman model that you're used to with JB Knife Works. It's just got a little bit more belly up here and it waits a little longer before it changes radius to meet the tip. Um, so if you're using it for skinning, breaking down game, you'll notice it uh, if you already have a regular layman. So this steel right here is PSF 27. It's got more chromium in it, which makes it more stainless like, although it's not technically a stainless. So Joey's super excited about this. Um, and he does handle all the steel purchases over at Pops Knife Supply. So model in that beautiful African blackwood, which I hope is coming across on video. It is a dark wood with a dark grain to it of a steel, more stain resistant, holds an edge better. There you go. Brand new model, sort of, with the Layman Hunter, but a brand new steel for sure. So really cool knife. And if you're interested in a regular uh, JB Knife Works Layman, we'll get you covered there too. All right, and that regular layman is this one right here, an OD canvas green commando with no liners underneath. Really awesome. This is going to be a steel that you're used to. This is the 8670, which is super popular, and this one is definitely not a stain resistant, so don't confuse those two. Uh, 8670 will patina and start to turn a darker color as you use it, which is going to look awesome with that OD green micarta right there. So that is the layman model, the regular layman model, not the little layman, not the layman hunter, but the layman. OD canvas, 8670, three and three quarters inch blade, awesome knife. Now, if you need a little less general purpose and a little more EDC, Joey's got you covered with that LC right here and that vintage butterscotch paper micarta. Black liners, black pens really set it off. This stuff almost looks like caramel candy. I mean, it's it's a really beautiful handle material. And uh, this one fits in the hand really well. You get a full four fingers in there, a nice uh, finger guard up front, nice indexing. Feels really comfortable, very confident, inspiring, because it doesn't feel like it's gonna move around in your hand when you're using it at all. So it makes a really good EDC size coming in at seven inches overall and two and three quarters inch on the blade. So if you're living somewhere with a restriction where you gotta keep your blade length under three inches, um, this one's going to fit the bill for you quite nicely. So beautiful little EDC knife, again an 8670. So you're gonna get a nice patina on there, which I think is gonna look great with that vintage butterscotch. All right, super excited to have Amy with Warland Enterprises back on Fiddleback Friday this week. Uh, she was setting up a new shop, so she's been absolutely overwhelmed and a little AWOL with us uh, for the past month, but she is back with some really cool stuff. Now we had one of these models uh, similar to this. I'm putting the sheath up there to let you know that Amy's always come with a sheath. So if you're looking for a maker that includes a sheath made to fit the knife, uh, she is as good at making leather uh, as she is making knives. And you can tell right there, she's really good at making knives. So this is the muskrat model, uh, the liners with the black liners, the yellow pinstripes, um, and also has the, the higher level of finish on the handle. Rockin' 1084, really excellent knife from Amy. Great all around user. Uh, the size of this one I really like personally um, because I, I'm well known for carrying knives in the hike, Fiddleback Forge Hike and Buddy size. And this one fits the bill with that a lot. Um, and just feels really natural and really good in hand to me, uh, just being used to Fiddleback Forge's Hike and Buddy. Uh, so if you're looking for something in that size range and an alternative with a sheath, Amy the Warland Enterprise has got you covered. Now one you definitely won't be mistaking as part of her basics lineup is this Beta right here. Look at the Bacote on that handle and look at the detail that she put into the sheath and the coloring in the sheath. This knife is awesome. Really great EDC size. Uh, this is the Beta in case I didn't mention that. Black liners. Red pinstripes, uh, again, under your three inch knife uh, blade range. So if you need something under three inches, this one comes in at two and five eighths. Uh, again, with 1084 steel, which is a super durable, well-known, super tough steel. Um, but the star of that show is that Bacote handle and the matching sheath that come with it. Absolutely gorgeous. This week, WA Searles 
chastity model this thing is absolutely gorgeous and maybe i should have even started with this one beautiful ironwood on this copper guard black spacer i'm loving the use of the orange pinstripes on the bolster as well uh, three and a quarter inch on this blade but we're measuring all the way to the copper not the cutting edge so your cutting edge is probably going to be right at the three inch range great size for edc 8670 on the steel which on this knife is going to be extra cool uh, because as it starts to darken up patina with use uh, it's really just going to fit that really nice gentlemanly frontier style the copper is going to patina as well um, it's just got a lot of old school cool appeal to it um, really nice knife obviously the wa Searles doesn't come with any kind of sheath solution uh, because he's a knife maker not a sheath maker whereas amy that i just showed you does both but diomedes industries uh, their 638 uh, ambidextrous lineup. So this is the, the APS version, which is a pocket sheath. That does fit this knife really, really well. This is my personal sheath with the red thread on it, but you could get orange thread to match that knife if you wanted to. Um, so those are available over on fiddlebackoutpost.com. All right, let's talk about another EDC size knife. This little chunk right here is the Okamogi Knife Company Otter Creek model. Rocking some marble wood with that OD canvas bolster, thick OD liners on there as well. And uh, I'm a big fan of marble wood. We don't see it very much uh, these days, uh, but it comes in like a darker grain or a lighter grain. This piece shows you a little bit of both and has that nice dark stripe going down the center of the wood. Really big fan of that. Uh, this knife's very comfortable, very full figured on the handle. Locks in really, really well. Doesn't really make you feel like you're holding a big chunky knife. And the steel on this one is the very tough 80 CRV2, uh, which is a great steel. Did a great job on this one. Really liking this Otter Creek. But Okamogi does have another knife this week as well. And that is this nice full-figured, full-size bushcraft knife right here. This is the Bullard XL. And that is spalted tamarind on the handle. Black liners, white pen stripes. He threw in a mosaic pen. Uh, so the blade on this one... I'm saying bushcraft size because it's a four and a quarter inch blade, eight and a half inch overall. And if you like your handles to be full in your hand, like I mentioned with the EDC one I just showed you, if you like full figured handles that just really fill your hand up nice and eliminate those hot spots, you'll probably like Lee's knives a lot. Uh, this one's going to make a really nice bushcraft knife for somebody and it's absolutely gorgeous on top of that so 8670 super tough steel holds an edge really well it's going to get a nice patina on it which again with that particular handle material is going to look pretty awesome all right next up let's just go ahead and talk about the most unique design of any knife maker that we ever get and that is duckhead forge this is his thumper model toxic waste kiranite on that handle crazy cool damascus 8670 on the core uh, with nickel and then an outer chain that has 1095. In other words, there's a lot of layers in that Damascus. And there's a lot of layers in that handle. And this thing is just an absolute party of shapes going on all over. I mean, as you can see, it's just, it's an absolutely beautiful knife. Really cool design. Really cool knife. I don't really have to say much about the handle material. It's absolutely gorgeous. Feels good in hand. It's super smooth finish. Absolutely gorgeous knife. So... Really cool if you're looking for something exotic. Um, Duckhead Forge Thumper, that's the way to go. That knife's really cool. Maybe you really love Damascus, but would rather have something a little more simple. I think we got you covered. This is MW Steelworks. This is his Kestrel model with a maple handle. Can't get more nice, simple than that right there. Three and a half inch blade, great EDC size. Uh, if you like your EDC knives to be a little slice, slicey and then also a little thin on the handle. Uh, so if you put them in a pocket sheet, that kind of thing, they, they're really thin, feel really good, comfortable to wear. Uh, MW Steelworks is going to be the way to go on that. The Damascus is really well done, very pretty design, and uh, it's a great model. It's We've had a lot of good luck with the Kestrels, a lot of good feedback with them. So it's going to be a great EDC knife for you. But just in case you need a backup plan, or maybe you just want a Warncliffe blade anyway, or you like the shape of the Damascus on this, or you happen to like rocking that copper resin again with the maple. This maple's got a little more figure than the one before. Obviously with that copper resin really popping off. Damascus blade, this one's going to make somebody very happy to be carrying with their EDC. I like this one. And as you can tell, very beautiful knife. Handle is absolutely gorgeous. 
again on the thinner side so if you like your edcs to be thinner and handle um, so they're a little more comfortable uh, just for general use it's super functional for everyday carry just got that precision to them um, really nice knife that is the mantis by the way i didn't mention that uh, that's the model name on there so really cool knife two very awesome edc knives from mw steelworks this week now if you like that copper resin swirl on that edc side you're really going to love this copper and silver swirl resin on this six inch chef now this one 8670 steel uh, you can tell it's already been darkened with a force patina on the blade i think it just gets it out of the way and it looks super cool anyway uh, especially with the silver part of that resin coming through on the handle very well balanced it balances out right where your finger indexes in that slot uh, so it's going to make it super nimble super easy six inch chef is just kind of that magic mark uh, where it really just hits most of your use cases so 90 percent of what you do in the kitchen this knife is going to do it so it's going to be your go-to meal prep really great addition to anybody's kitchen so really cool knife Really cool setups from all the MW Steelworks knives this week. Really happy with all those. And a model that needs pretty much no introduction at this point. This is the Lion Killer, which you are intimately familiar with from several makers participating in challenges and making this design uh, that's available over at Pops Knife Supply. This is Barry Bladeworks version of it. So this is Luke's iteration of it and a very different shape on the handle as you can tell right there very angular very very clean because of the angular design he threw in a taper tang of course as well and you might miss the fact that it's got a yellow pinstripe on there you got to look kind of close on there because it kind of blends in a little bit with that ivory paper micarta but really cool knife uh, you've seen the line killers before obviously this one might be one of my favorites that i've seen so far and uh, we do have sheaths on, over on fiddlebackoutpost.com for these as well. We got three different versions. Uh, we figured since so many people are making them, might as well give you guys a bunch of options on how to carry them should you choose to. So that's Barry Bladeworks, Line Killer, and I've got two more knives from Luke as well. All right, so here's Barry Bladeworks. This is his Thatcher model, camel bone on the handle. Really like that, really beautiful knife. Threw in a mosaic pin at the top nice size on this particular knife it feels really really comfortable in hand uh, full four finger grip with no problem whatsoever uh, you feel like you guys a little room to move around but it's got really nice indexing to keep you locked in uh, kind of a pointy finger guard right there which is nice because uh, you always know where that knife is in hand it gives you a really pronounced reference point uh, so if you're moving it around in your hand uh, you can always tell where it's at so natural liners black pinstripes on that three and a half inch on that blade uh, eight inch overall and that's rocking 8670 uh, which once that blade starts to get a patina on it, it's going to look really good with that camel bone so really nicely done from luke with barry blade works nice knife that's the thatcher all right last but not least barry blade works this is the prick model i didn't come up with the name folks don't blame me for it but osage really nice piece of osage on the handle i really like this model uh, despite its uh, really nice size you get full four finger on there the uh, fourth finger for me anyway is right on top of that pommel transition right there um, so you could do a four finger you know the fourth finger pinky tucked under or it can rest right there on that lanyard hole either way but really nice size for an edc knife and i'm really loving that piece of osage which is going to darken up and get more of a honey brown even more than it is you know as it's exposed to light uh, so it's going to get even more beautiful as time goes on and then also have an 8670 on the steel the steel is going to patina as well so it's going to be a really nice knife for a daily carry right there so that wraps up all the in hand for fiddleback friday when we make the transition next week we'll be bringing on another new maker as well so super excited to introduce you to them on the new platform again more information on all that coming next week and if you've stuck around this long, I promised you that I would tell you how to go about getting one of these amazing knives. And it, we make it pretty easy. So over on fiddlebackforge.com slash Friday is where all these knives post up at exactly 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you want to be there a little bit early. It's the first person to complete the entire checkout process that gets the knife. Some of these tend to go in the first minute. So if you need a little bit more information, though, to make an informed decision and the video didn't quite give you quite enough information to make that decision to know that you're going to pull the trigger right at nine o'clock. Uh, we take care of that as well. So over on fiddlebackforge.com preview, 
We do a full photo spread on each one, um, all the specs, pricing, everything you need to know uh, to help you with that informed decision along with this video. So we're gonna see you next week. The video will be in the same place. And if you're signed up for the newsletter, uh, you'll get it in your inbox as usual, but there'll be, a, like I said, some changes. I'll go over that in the video next week. Uh, if we keep our time frame the way it is, hopefully everything goes on time. And uh, hey, life's too short to carry an ugly knife. Hope we helped you with it next week. If not, we'll help you with it very soon. See you next week.